All right, so we're back. Okay, I made a few changes in my setup. I, I bought, it wasn't a lot of money. It was only like $120. And I'm picking up the back part where I can attach the seat and it slides back and forth. But it's just a basic metal tubing setup. And I removed everything from the chair. And I put it on the stand. I'll do a pull back and you get a better look at it. And I turned my monitor setup into a three monitor setup, which is incredible. I mean, I thought everything was cool with the head tracking thing. I mean, with the head tracking thing and three, can oh my God, three monitors. Awesome. So I've been getting a lot of questions also on the quality and how I ended up doing the adjustments on this, because I guess there's a few people that may be thinking about getting it and they want to be prepared. So basically, first thing I want to touch base on is when I went by the directions to set the throttle up, it says like with the 18, it says start and idle, go to full mill and then stop there and it'll look the remainder will go into afterburner what's left over as you keep pushing forward will be afterburner but you only want to work it from full mill from from idle to full mill now it had the same directions for the f-16 and i want to say it did not work i don't know if i was doing something wrong but i could not get it to work let me zoom this in a little bit okay so i just wanted to get a little closer look of this now, what I found out after spending an hour racking my brains, going back and forth from full mill, from idle to full mill, from idle to full mill, and then it has another in the the SimApp Pro program where it says go to um, after after you do your settings in the SimApp Pro, which I'm going to bring right up in a second. I'll bring it up now. Actually, have some updates as we run them. I'm going to give it a second to run those updates. I, I I've got to get uh, a mic that I can walk around with. I I have the small lav mics, but that, that's just not going to get the sound quality that you can get with a good microphone that you can just hold in your hand, which I don't have. I have a shotgun mic on the other thing, and I have this. But okay, so we got the SimApp program up, and I'm going to have to drag that over and show you all that. Oh, did I hit record? Oh, I don't need to. It's recording from there. Yeah. So before we get on to the SimApp program, I want to just go over some of the features on this. Basically, to get this adjusted to the point where you can bring it all the way back into the off area, you can set your jet, I guess, you can set your F-16 or whatever it may be to shut down. If you go into the off or shut down the engines at least, um, I really didn't even go that far. I rarely ever just... You go to idle and, you know, you finish up. But if you really want to go 100%, you can go 100%. So I put a little bit of tape over here because when it was on the chair <clears throat> with the Monster Tech stuff, which is great, but it's a little tough when you're moving around and get pushed. It just makes it a little, you, you bet. This is just a very beginner setup that I'm putting this all on. And... <laughs> What's nice about it is that the metal tubing, and you'll get to see it after, you can build off of this. So we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Again, all the switches are still great. I mean, you can hear that from there. I can see the sound picking it up. Okay, so we're in the off position. You push it up, forward. It drops over here into your idle. Now, according to Wind Wing directions, it says go, start and idle when you are doing your configuration. Go to full mill, idle, full mill, back to idle, and then you save. Then it has an afterburner that you click on to do your configuration, and it's right here. You pick it up, push it down, and it says just pull it back slow, boom. Okay, I'm not going to spend 20 minutes going over that. It did not work for me. It would not work for me. <laughs> I was going crazy. Maybe it's something new where they updated their program. I'm really not sure. I tried finding some information on it, and I couldn't. So here we are here. So what I did to fix the whole problem, I started in idle, picked up the handle, pulled the, pulled the little handle back, 
I have shot of fingers, so sometimes I need to use two of them. But, well, I could use one. But anyways, picked it up, idle, and I went all the way forward to the very end where the afterburn was. Pulled it back, it was there, it dropped into full mill, idle. All the way forward past the afterburn to the very end, full mill, idle, and I saved and it picked it up perfect. So if you're having problems with it, that may be a fix. Okay, onward. I'm one of those guys, everything's gotta be like square and level. And that's what I did when I put this together and <laughs> that's not the way it works. So when I got it all hooked up, I was pulling my hair out for a little while because I'm like, why doesn't this thing go all the way back into the off position? Well, you have to loosen all the nuts up and these screws on both sides and you have to take this and you just work it. You pull it down over here is what I did. I ended up, I took this into the shop and I cut it. I don't see any need in the future. I, I've got plenty of this stock around. I could cut another one out the same size. So I ended up cutting it and I see some people like to push all the way through. I, I, I kind of like see that as defeating the whole purpose of the realism that you're seeking when you go out and you, you spend the kind of money you spend on this. I would think that you'd want to get the full features of the real F-16 and pushing right through it isn't, I don't think, the real way or else why, why do they have it? So for me, I can't go past I have to pick the handle up and push it forward. So you basically loosen up on both sides, everything. You don't have to worry much about these bottom ones. Well, actually, I'm sorry you do, because when you get it all adjusted, you may have to move it back because you want to keep this little sealed barren with the nylon wheel. You want to keep that scented as much as you can. You loosen it up and again, push it forward. This ended up coming up higher. So I didn't need to cut nothing off on this because by the time I got done readjusting it and pulling it over and tighten it a little bit, check it again, move it up, move it down. It takes a little while. You want to make sure everything stays scented. You'll get it. Start tightening the bolt at a nut at a time or screw at a time. They're all Allen key. Uh, what do they call it in um, the other place there over in Europe, not, well, Hex, I guess, but they're all Allen key. And that's basically all there is to it. For the people that were asking about that, it's just a matter of loosening both of these up, keeping them all in line as well as you can, and just doing adjustments slowly till you get it where you want it. But this is where all the adjustments will be. Back and forth here, and also loosen these side right here because you may have to move it back and forth a little bit. Don't loosen them up so much that you lose the nut down in there. You don't want to do that. Just enough so you can, it's able to be, you can move it. One other thing that I found that I wasn't, I get what they did. On a real F-16, this is just one knob. There's no other knob right here. Just one knob that you can turn. Yeah, your main ring, your uncaged cage, whatever. It's, I guess that's for your range. Anyways, it's there. You can use it. But it's very hard. you got to kind of like push your thumb up against it. And it, I don't know, it just would have been easier to have the knob to be able to turn. But I can see what Win Wing did. Is they ended up putting this castle hat on here. So you can assign some different buttons. There's also a couple of buttons underneath that you can use. And I've got them assigned. You can, you can say, sign your cockpit to it. Um, the rest of the stuff is here. If you're in the 18, your launch bar, your hook, down and up, wing fold, all works. Landing gear, down and up. Parking brake assigned. Flaps. With the F-16, just leave the flaps where they are because when you put your wheels up, 
the flaps are automatic. They, they work with the plane. That's, you don't need, like in the 18, it's full flaps down for takeoff. You move it to half, and then all the way up, you put it in auto. It automatically goes into auto. For this right here is where I know a lot of people use this for the zoom. I found it easier for this for the zoom. And I'm trying to remember, I did another type of, I found another the program that I could assign this to. So I just started assigning stuff. I still have to remember where all this stuff is. Your master arm on and off. And the one other thing that I would have liked to see them do besides this knob is the top plate. I would have rather it been all F-16 or all F-15 because the grip, uh, 17, the grip's very similar. Or if it's 18, it all be 18. You have a few buttons for 16. You have some F-15 over here, a couple of them, which is on, off, alt, hold. Um, and over here, you've got some A-10 stuff. But I would have rather had everything assigned just for whatever specific plane. I, can, I get it. It would be a lot of work for them to make different plates for every order. The rest of the buttons on here, it's all self-explanatory. You have all your communications, your dogfight mode, your antenna elevation. You know, I had a problem with this. I couldn't get it to assign. But when I went into the game, I assigned it to a different button. I think it was one of these, actually. I assigned it to one of these. It worked. I had to change the access. And then when I went into the game, I ended up not even bothering because I seen in the game on the F-16, the numbers changing in the radar, it automatically picked it up. So I was like, yeah, cool. All right, I'll take it. Next button, air brake. Mine is assigned forwards all the way up, neutral. And once you're on the ground and you have your aircraft under control, you pull it back and it drops your air brakes. Over here, you have the cursor for the, it's the RDR, I guess that's shot for radar. Enable switch, you can depress it. Some of these you can depress. Depress, depress, no depress. So like three of them on here, you can depress and you can make different, you can assign different things for it. So that's pretty much how I solve the problem of getting this. It's just basically loosening everything up adjusting it you don't have to take this in and cut that off it did stick up a bit and when it was on my chair and i turned it kept hitting my desk so i got it to where i wanted it brought it over to the, to the shop and took it off and i'm not going to worry about because like i said this this extrusion pipes or tubing or whatever they want to call it bars that stuff's it's you can get it anywhere what I'm going to do in the next part of the video is show you what I did with the, I, I'm going to call it like a, a novice setup for a cockpit because it's nothing like uh, Bud Knocker. Oh my goodness, they get some crazy stuff. And a couple of the other guys, it's, it's incredible. It's big money. And like I said, I picked the setup that I have. It was just a couple of bucks over 100. I think it was like 118 different companies it's like you can buy the same exact one by like 30 different companies so someone's making them sell it to everybody and then everybody's putting their own name on it so we're going to go back pull this back and that'll be the next part of the video i'm going to take a short little break and then we're going to go over the wind wing sim app pro and you can see how the buttons and everything works with that so we'll be right back folks okay so you guys can get a pretty good idea of what i did over here basically Everything screws together with Allen type keys. It's just tubing, um, probably inch and a half and whatever size slides down inside of there. You know what time it is, guys? It's Red Bull time. No, that I'm not being sponsored by them. I wish. <sighs> Stuff gets you zinged. This keyboard off right here. Give you a better look at this little rack that I haven't put into its permanent position yet. I still haven't even, everything on it's still kind of, it, it's snug, but not tight because I'm still in the process of doing all the cables, trying to get everything nice and neat. The last way, the first time I set everything up, oh, my disaster. I just wanted to get everything going. I had wires running all over the place. So I'm slowly like cleaning everything up. Okay, so this is easy enough. And, you know, I could make this right at my, at where I work. I could have this made and put it in. Basically, it has a couple of knobs. Yep. 
Yeah. Plenty of... I was going to say... Plenty of square tubing goes in there. And you can see down here where I have my MFG Crosswind version 3 with the damper on it. If you're going to get it for the $50 extra, get it. Get the damper when you get the, the rudder pedals. Because the shipping from the Ukraine, or not Ukraine, Yugoslavia, it's expensive. So if, if you buy the rudder pedals and then a week later you decide you want to get the damper, which it's well worth it, it just takes, it, it smooths everything right out, gives it a nice, nice touch, nice flow. All the bearings on this device, they're all closed, sealed bearings. They're pre-greased, they'll probably last forever. Because you're not going to, you don't slam on these much and you don't use them a lot. So you have your brake and set up, right brake left brake and you can see you would very rarely use more than this when you're landing going down the runway even with a pretty big curve like cap uses over on um grim reaper he puts like a 25 curve on it and it still doesn't take much to swing your tail rudder around and the f14 this would virtually as you're swinging the tail rudder and moving it yeah, it's, it's doing this, but it's also turning other things. All the F-22, the F-14, they, they kind of work totally different. They're a whole different feel. I actually found, I think the A-10, it's, it's kind of hard to learn all the buttons and, and everything. But that thing floats like a balloon. It's beautiful. You, you can just buzz around at 150 miles an hour, 150 knots, and no problems. Another thing about Verpal that really... Like I said, they make great stuff. If you look at their springs and cam setup, it's very similar to Winwing. Winwing, you can order and have it the next week. Everything I've ordered from Verpal, I've waited five, six, seven weeks for. I ordered some heavy-duty springs and some cams. I put the different cams that come with this in there. But I want some heavier springs. They sell them on the site. Well, it's going on. It's going on six weeks, and they're still processing. I mean, I don't know what their deal is if they just have like a holding over spot where they get a shipment in, they have their people that work for them run over there, get everything packaged and shipped. Winwing, I think, has more of a constant flow of stuff coming in all the time. So you can pretty much get anything the next week. And like I said, if I it wasn't for already having the grips, which are very expensive, I probably would have went Winwing all the way around. Not that I like one better than the other. I just would have went that way because I wouldn't be waiting five, six, seven weeks for just a set of springs. So that's going to pretty much wrap it up. I mean, this is my setup so far. Oh, let me back it up and show you the three monitors. So that's where we're going to go from there. So that gives you a pretty good idea of what the three monitor set looks like. I still got a little bit of cleaning to do on top of the desk. But compared to what it looked like, it's really nice now. So let me bring up the uh, SIMAP Pro program and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at those functions because people have been asking me about that. This is going to probably be a longer video. So remember, to try to watch it to the end. If not, jump ahead, jump to where you need to. And uh, don't forget to sub or give me a like. So let's check this next part out. All right, so here we are at the very first screen of the SIMAP program. What I'm going to do is just give you a quick rundown of how everything works on here. So the first screen is going to show you what devices you have that belong to WinWing. And this is pretty much all I have is the F16, which shows the throttle right over here, and the base. This is different devices, virtual devices. This is where you would do your key binding. This is if you have the vibration one, uh, the vibration setup, which I don't have. And for your multifunction displays, which I don't have yet, I would like to get some. I, I'm actually more interested in getting a landing gear set up and the other piece of equipment where you can push all the buttons. But, yeah, I'm not too worried about displays. I don't mind using the displays on the screen. So we're going to go back to device. And this pretty much shows you what everything does. So you can see the first buttons that I'm going to press over here. In this area, we're going to look at the throttle. This is your VHF. So yeah, so right over here, the first button 
that I'm going to show you in this area. This is going to be all of your communication. So you have VHF, IFF, in, which would be all the way to the right, out, VHF comms, UHF in, and you can also depress the button. And it reads everything over on this side of the screen. You can tell everything's all set when it says connected. You don't have to keep this running once you've updated it and set everything. Myself, I leave it running. You never know when an update's coming. Over here, you, this is your main ring, your uncage, RNG. You can see how it rolls back and forth. And depress. Next button is your dogfight button, which would be right over in this area. This is it right here. That's dogfight. And these buttons are always on for some reason. I guess that's just the way it's designed. So I usually use anything like this that stays powered. Um, if it has a neutral, that's where I put it in the middle. This way it's not activating something all the time. The next button is your speed brake. That's this lower, lower button. Again, I leave it in the middle for neutral. Forward, speed brakes go up and it bounces back when you pull it back it goes back to your neutral so that's just for some reason that's just the way i like it so to drop your speed brakes you just pull it back hold it for a second boom they're down and then it stays in neutral these are your two switches underneath right here two buttons rather button three and button four and this is what i was talking about with setting it up i kept going from here to here and it would not stop there it would go full afterburner and in the, the directions it said only go from idle to full mill i did that and it kept going full afterburner so after like i said an hour of scratching my head saying what the hell am i doing wrong <laughs> well i finally figured it out for the for me this is what worked i put it in idle full afterburner bring it back it would drop idle and then i would go back and forth to get the exact idle to full mill i checked one more time pulled it back very slow idle mill idle mill it's all nice and even i saved the settings you can see the different sliders slider one slider two you have some buttons on here that you can just assign to things i have um one of the buttons is just an auto start once you learn all the set once you learn how to start it you don't have to it's quicker to start it on your own you can bypass some stuff but if you wanted to do the whole run through you can go to auto start you have your air to air mode you can assign you have a jettison button over here this can be either signed for jettison the leftover inventory of what you have on your plane or maybe even jettison yourself and then this button right here i have that set up for a power off button now the ones over here this is for the f-16 it's the only little piece of panel on here for an f-16 i have that set up for what it says hd g SEL, I found that in there, did a little reading on what it's supposed to do. I put it, I barely ever use it. And then ATT hold down the bottom. And then you can go into an advanced mode, ATT hold. And these switches that you can use, these little knobs for like the HMD, the panel, LTS, which I guess is your lighting. If you want to, I used it to brighten the dashboard and lessen the brightness. Your CRS and your HDG. They also depress. Now, I'm not going to go over how I assigned everything to what jet. I will do that eventually. Try to update some stuff. But Grim Reaper, he pretty much covers all of that in mostly all of his videos. A lot of them are still with his older flight setup. I think it was Thrustmaster. Um, I hope if he sees this video, Grim, update it. I know you have Win Wing stuff. Do an update on how you assigned everything to Win Wing. It'd be awesome. I'd love to see that. So... That wraps about all of it up. I can't really think of anything else. Another thing that I ended up picking up was one of those Razor Tataris, Tataris, whatever they call them. It's that little hand thing. It's got that funky bump on it. But I also use that to assign a lot of keys to for different things like on the 18. It's just a handy little, uh, you, you can find, I, I got it on eBay. I got the Pro, 
which is not the membrane style, it's the clicky buttons. And yeah, I, it came in handy. I've been slowly adding a button here, button there, and finding things. So, all right. I hope this helps everybody out. I've got a lot of editing to do at this point. Matter of fact, I haven't got to fly in a few days because of everything I've been doing. Um, I just lost probably, what, an hour? By the time I video edited all this up, I'll chop out 30 minutes worth. But I wanted to finish this setup. And, um, but I'd like to get this video out because I've been getting questions all week about this stuff. So you can find this little sim pit on Amazon. Like I said, if you look it up, there's a front part which has the left and right arms where you can put your throttle base and joystick base. It has a section where you can put, I had to drill some holes. I mean, it's got like so many holes and I thought I would just like put my um, MFG rudder pedals on this thing and it would like line up automatically. No, I, I, I had to run, do some, do some drilling. So as well as with the joystick, I had to do some drilling on the joystick um, plate. I can't believe with the hundred holes it has on that one little plate. I, I couldn't, I, I could only line up two and I could have stayed with that, but I wanted four. So I drilled them out. I made a little template, drilled them out, dropped it on and it's nice and sturdy on there. I would recommend definitely putting like a thin sheet of like plastic underneath it, not like plastic bag. I'm talking like a very, very thin sheet of like flexible plastic. If you can cut it out, drill some holes in it, cut it out to the exact size, just to keep the dust out, kind of like a gasket. And that would be a good idea if they gave a gasket too with it. But maybe in the future, if they hear this video, it would be nice to get a gasket with it. All right, so we're going to wrap it up there, folks. I'll be getting on to doing another video pretty soon. I got to get back to doing some old school stuff where I'm doing video cards and CPUs and water coolers and stuff like that i've gotten a few questions on that but really this is taken right off i've gotten a lot of people contacting me about this stuff it's it's great and i don't mind if you have any questions send them my way i don't mind answering them i will get back to everyone maybe not within five minutes but i will get back to everyone that asked me a question anyways that's going to do it for today on this i hope you enjoyed this again remember please if you're just coming across this and you're not a subscriber, subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this. You'll be notified. I will put some links down below for WinWing, Verple, and this little sim pit in the description. And you'll have pretty much all the information you need. So again, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this. I'll be back to do more. Eventually, I'll get to even fly this thing in between doing videos. Maybe I'll even stop videoing my flying. Once I learn how to really fly good, quick note, F-18, Warthog, not hard to land. F-16, different animal, but I love it. Okay, people, we'll be seeing you around. Stay safe, fly straight, have a great day.